with men today. And then he talked to a silent the moment, and then he said, Men simply don't think. It's about this that I want to talk with you. We live today in a golden age. This is an era that man has looked forward to, dreamed of, and worked toward for thousands of years. But since it's here, we pretty well take it for granted. We in America are particularly fortunate to live in the richest land that ever existed on the face of the earth, a land of abundant opportunity for everyone. But you know what happens? Well, let's take a hundred men who start even at the age of 25. Do you have any idea what will happen to those men by the time they're 65? These 100 men who all start even at the age of 25 believe they're going to be successful. If you ask any one of these men if he wanted to be a success, he'd tell you he did. And you'd notice that he was eager toward life, that there was a certain sparkle to his eye, an erectness to his carriage, and life seemed like a pretty interesting adventure to him. But by the time they're 65, one will be rich. Four will be financially independent. Five will still be working. Fifty-four will be broke. Now think a moment, out of the 100, only five make the grade. Now why do so many fail? What has happened to the sparkle that was there when they were 25? What's become of the dreams, the hopes, the plans? And why is there such a large disparity between what these men intended to do and what they actually accomplished? When we say about 5% achieve success, we have to define success. And here's the best definition I've ever been able to find. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. If a man is working toward a predetermined goal and knows where he's going, that man is a success. If he's not doing that, he's a failure. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Rollo May, the distinguished psychiatrist, wrote a wonderful book called Man's Search for Himself. And in this book, he says, the opposite of courage in our society is not cowardice. It is conformity. And there you have the trouble today. It's conformity. People acting like everyone else without knowing why, without knowing where they're going. Now think of it. In America right now, there are over 18 million people, 65 years of age and older. And most of them are broke. They're dependent on someone else for life's necessities. Now we learn to read by the time we're seven. We learn to make a living by the time we're 25. Usually by that time we're not only making a living, we're supporting a family. And yet by the time we're 65, we haven't learned how to become financially independent in the richest land that has ever been known. Why? We conform. And the trouble is that we're acting like the wrong percentage group, the 95 who don't succeed. Now why do these people conform? Well, they really don't know. These people believe that their lives are shaped by circumstances, by things that happen to them, by exterior forces. They're undirected people. A survey was made one time that covered a lot of men working then, and these men were asked, why do you work? Why do you get up in the morning? Nineteen out of twenty had no idea. If you ask them, they'll say, well, everyone goes to work in the morning, and that's the reason they do it, because everyone else is doing it. Now, let's get back to our definition of success. Who succeeds? The only person who succeeds is the person who is progressively realizing a worthy ideal. He's the person who says, I'm going to become this, and then begins to work toward that goal. I'll tell you who the successful people are. A success is the school teacher who's teaching school because that's what he or she wants to do. The success is the woman who's a wife and mother because she wanted to become a wife and mother and is doing a good job of it. The success is the man who runs the corner gas station because that was his dream. That's what he wanted to do. The success is the successful salesman who wants to become a top-notch salesman and grow and build with his organization. A success is anyone who is doing deliberately a predetermined job because that's what he decided to do deliberately. But only one out of 20 does that. That's why today there isn't really any competition unless we make it for ourselves. Instead of competing, all we have to do is create you know, for 20 years, I looked for the key which would determine what would happen to a human being. Was there a key I wanted to know which would make the future a promise that we could foretell to a large extent? Was there a key that would guarantee a person's becoming successful if he only knew about it and knew how to use it? Well, there is such a key, and I found it. Have you ever wondered why so many men work so hard and honestly without ever achieving anything in particular, and others don't seem to work hard and yet seem to get everything? They seem to have a magic touch. You've heard them say that about someone. Everything he touches turns to gold. And have you ever noticed that a man who becomes successful tends to continue to become successful? And on the other hand, have you noticed how a man who's a failure tends to continue to fail? Well, it's because 
interested goals. Some of us have goals, some don't. People with goals succeed because they know where they're going. It's that simple. Think of a ship leaving a harbor, and think of it with a complete voyage mapped out and planned. The captain and crew know exactly where it's going. It's a definite goal. Now, 9,999 times out of 10,000, it will get to where it started out to get. Now, let's take another ship, just like the first, only let's not put a crew on it or a captain at the helm. Let's give it no aiming point, no goal, no destination. We just start the engines and let it go. I think you'll agree with me that if it gets out of the harbor at all, it'll either sink or wind up on some deserted beach of derelict. It can't go any place because it has no destination and no guidance, and it's the same with a human being. Take the salesman, for example. There's no other person in the world today with the future of a good salesman. Selling is the world's highest paid profession, if we're good at it, and if we know where we're going. Every company needs top-notch salesmen, and they reward those men. The sky's the limit for them. But how many can you find? Someone once said the human race is fixed, not to prevent the strong from winning, but to prevent the weak from losing. The American economy today can be likened to a convoy in time of war. The entire economy is slowed down to protect its weakest link, just as the convoy had to go at the speed that would permit the slowest vessel to remain in formation. That's why it's so easy to make a living today. It takes no particular brains or talent to make a living and support a family today. So we have a plateau of so-called security, if that's what a person is looking for. But we do have to decide how high above this plateau we want to wait. Now let's get back to the strangest secret in the world, the story that I wanted to tell you today. Why do men with goals succeed in life and men without them fail? Well, let me tell you something which, if you really understand it, will alter your life immediately. If you understand completely what I'm going to tell you from this moment on, your life will never be the same again. You will suddenly find that good luck just seems to be attracted to you. The things you want just seem to fall in line, and from now on you won't have the problems, the worries, the gnawing lump of anxiety that perhaps you've experienced before. Doubt, fear, well, there'll be things of the past. Here's the key to success and the key to failure. We become what we think about. Now let me say that again. We become what we think about. Throughout all history, the great wise men and teachers, philosophers, and prophets have disagreed with one another on many different things. It's only on this one point that they are in complete and unanimous agreement. Listen to what Marcus Aurelius, the great Roman emperor, said. A man's life is what his thoughts make of it. All right. Welcome. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> this is Magic on a Budget. And it's Ceremonial Witch here, Corey LeBlanc. And the voice you just heard, in case you didn't know, was De our Earl Nightingale. Um, and that was from 1956. Now, before I get into some of the things he said and why I'm putting it on this channel, um, I just want to throw out there that anybody saying a law of attraction and hermetic principles and, you know, the people that try to tear down the magic and the witchcraft communities and all this, saying it's new age garbage and all that. Well, this is in the 50s, so there's no way that this is new age. And exactly what he's promoting on here is basically the law of attraction, but the real way to do it, at least real for me, because I've done it. I've used it, not for cash, not for making money, but I've used it for uh, different types of manifestations. Um, I even used it for banishings, and it works. And the uh, reason I'm putting it on here, not ceremonial witchcraft, is because it's on a budget. The technique that he gives, that I won't say, but he gives later. Uh, um, I took his 32-minute clip from YouTube. I dissected it into an eight minute, a seven minute, a six minute, and a four minute. Uh, the last four minutes, I want to say, is where he tells you what to do and how to do it and all that. But if you check it out, it's Earl Nightingale. Um, I think it's titled, this, after this 32 minutes, will change your life, something like that. But anyways, what he's talking about in there is true. Um, he defines success, okay? And success is progressing a realization of a worthy ideal. Which, you know, you hear me talking about following your passion and your purpose. Um, I, I think I talked about it on this channel and on the uh, Ceremony Witchcraft, which I'm going to be having another show come on there today. I have it already almost ready to go. I'm going to release this one first and then that one second. Um, uh, but um, being on your passion, just, be, just to be on your passion is, you know, that's the opposite of conformity. Um, conformity is just doing your job out of fear that you are going to lose your house or your car or your, your rent or you won't be able to feed your kids and shit like that, okay? But once you find your passion, 
or you at least get out of that job long enough, find a way to survive for a little bit of time, and you do that, and you start searching, and you, you maybe even use magic to ask, cast, of what, help me find my purpose, you know, find my purpose. Um, you know, once you're on that, the money's not going to matter. You won't even think about it. And when it does come up, like you, like in my circumstances, bills come up a lot with me and my wife saying, oh, the money's not there. What are we going to do? Don't worry about it. If you're going to worry about how it's going to come and in your head analyze the ways it can't come or it's not possible that we're going to get the money, then you are literally stopping any possibility from happening. So just don't worry about it and something will work out. If you truly believe in your heart that it's going to happen, it will happen. And it does. It always does. Always does. I'll give you countless times of when you know we had people coming over. So we spent all our money and we had a few more days before groceries. Uh, and we had nothing, barely anything, you know, just enough stuff. This is when the baby was really young. Only had some formula in the house, enough for the baby. But for the other kids going to school, no school scouts, no juices, no nothing. How about we put everything in this party? And we get to the party, um, be my wife's and then mine. It generally happens a couple times a year. Normally, right after Christmas is a rough part. So it was my wife's party. And my mom said, buying her gifts, gave her money. And not only that, we had more leftovers than we could count. Everything from juice boxes that my mom brought for the kids to pop to leftover hamburgers and turkey and all this crap. I mean, everything we were worried about, she was worried about money for gas, money for things. She got the money. She was worried about getting food for the kids and we got the food. And it was just by not worrying. She actually put it into practice, which she doesn't do often, but sometimes she does do. And I think she does it out of like, oh, I'll fucking prove him wrong. Which uh, to me, I thought it wouldn't work because she's doing it like that, but it, it does work. So she is getting it out of her mind long enough to, to not think about it. But to, and that's what I want to talk about because uh, I am no longer conforming. Um, I was at a job, which funny enough was called Matrix was the name of it. It was a shopper's drug mart warehouse, but it was called Matrix. And uh, I'll explain why that's funny in the ceremonial witchcraft um, episode when I get into some of Greg uh, Barden's stuff that I talked about because uh, I wasn't very kind to Gaia. But in the same sense, I did say Gaia.com, the alien stuff they were putting out was good because it gets people to awake and all that. But I do want to go over what Greg does and how I, why I like him so much and why I don't think guy.com is bad or good. I think they're just trying to put information out there that they believe is true and all that or to wake people up. But I'll get into that on the Ceremony of Witchcraft uh, show later. But the conformity part, everybody's conforming. Out of all those hundred men, he said only five made the grade, but only like one was rich, really. And it's very true. My mother, we just had her birthday. Uh, her birthday is actually the third, so it's actually tomorrow. But uh, we celebrated it yesterday, uh, and she just turned, uh, okay, she's, I think she's uh, 64 now. So she's one year away from 65 to retire, and she's going to work right to that day. I know, and then have to count on her retirement plan that her work provided for her and CPP, uh, Canadian Pension Plan, you know, and anything else she put aside. And, you know, depending on how long she lives, she may or may not run out of money. Who knows? I, I know my mom, so I know she's going to be okay. But, uh, and now that I know magic, I'll make sure she's okay. But point is, that's how society is. And for me, going against the grain right now, you know, staying at home, after two years of uh, being off of that job, two and a half years now, and only taking, um, well, I took two jobs in between, but I was doing the two jobs at the same time to try to catch up and all that, and that's when I said, fuck this. Um, but I get opposition all the time from my wife. Um, you know, she fears that we can't uh, pay the bills, so she'll try to guilt and force me into a job, and fuck that. I know what I'm doing. I know I'm on my purpose. It is the podcast thing I'm doing now on speaker what what's going to make the ends ends meet maybe maybe not but i can make ends meet just through the magic so this is something i like doing just to do it and according to the most of the guys i read they say when you're on that path of just doing what you love to do just to do it that's when the money comes in that's whenever it's just going to come and you're going to be like well i'd be doing this anyway so the money's just a bonus and that's kind of what's going on you know and that's what's happening for me so I, I consider I am successful and it's important to determine that and say that whenever you do this stuff, even if you don't have any money yet from your podcast or from your store you just opened or you're building crafts or whatever you're doing, if you haven't started getting any financial gains yet and you don't think you're successful, no, if you are following 
your dream, your ideals, your, your vision that you had, okay? And you're actually taking the steps and you're making the stuff, you're putting the time in every day, you're enjoying yourself while you're doing it, you can say you're successful. Earl Nightingale just told you that. This guy, this guy knows his shit. I, I urge you to look up his stuff. He's got so much important shit. Um, but most people, they don't have a goal. They don't have a vision. They don't have a dream. Um, if you ask them, you know, you're going to hear, oh, I wish I was a celebrity or a singer or a movie star or a baseball star, hockey star, you know, or I want a million bucks, stuff like that. But that's vague ass bullshit that they haven't ever even thought about. It's not a real dream. It's not a real passion. You know what I mean? Yes, I'm sure everybody would love to play a sport that they're good at and make money off of it or be a movie star until they actually have to act and figure out they can't act. But the point is that there's, it's not an easy route, even for the so-called millions people. You know, if you, win, if you win a million dollars the easy way, but you don't do any hard work to keep it, then you're not going to keep that million dollars. It's as simple as that, right? And you say, think these actors and actresses had it so easy, but I bet you they don't. I bet you it wasn't. I bet you they had to do some shit to get there. But once again, if that was their idea, their vision, they wanted to do that, added to their talent, when they put in motion, you know what? It became it. I mean, for a singer and a movie star, it might be easy in a sense because your vision is being a movie star. So while you're doing a movie, you're acting out, you're playing your role. You're literally playing the role. You know, Law of Attraction tells you you have to get into, see what you're doing, feel what you're doing, and then put emotion to it. So for a movie star who knows this information, or even a singer, to know that this is how it works, well, that singer is literally being what she wants to be, just performing on you know a stage in front of her record label, whoever wants to pick her up, and then she puts emotion into that song. And yeah, they're going to pick her up and she's going to make her dreams come true. Whereas if you're at home and you want to be a stay-at-home business fan or something, well then you're going to have to put on the fucking suit get on the laptop and start doing some research or whatever, put emotion to it, pretend like you're already doing your job. That would be the equivalent. That's why that's the only way I could see that they got an easier way of doing that. But you can still do that, you know. I, I used to do that all the time. I told my wife that too. I was wearing a suit all the time everywhere I went. Oh, we were having it was a lot of attraction stuff and this is actually something that Phil talks about. And um She's like, why are you dressed up? She's like, I look like a bum. We're just going to the store. I'm like, well, when people see you looking like this, if they think you have money, people's thoughts around you can give you money. If everybody around sees you looking like a bum, well, what do you think that's going to have? You know, I want people to think I am what I'm trying to be. You know, just another little thing you can help uh, that could help out your your manifestations and all that. But like I said before, it's easy to be a dick. It's easy to stay mad. It's hard to forgive. And it's the same thing with this. It's easy to conform and just go do a job out of fear. It's hard to say, no, I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to, if I get no money coming in, I got to eat only fucking rice. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do my dream. I'm going to enjoy doing my dream. And if the money comes, then it comes. And if it don't, well, then I'll figure it out after that. And I, I'd be willing to bet everything it's going to work out for you. If you're truly doing your purpose and you're not doing it just to try to prove someone wrong, it's going to work out for you. Um, yeah, and one of the last lines he said I loved in that little clip was, we become what we think about, which is the whole premise of the whole show. And, you know, that's what you think about, you bring about, you know. We become what we think about. You know, the next clip he's going to go into a bunch of different old guys, older than his time frame, who um, say the same fucking thing. And, uh, yeah. I'll come back after that. Let's play it. By long meditation and the conviction that a human being with a settled purpose must accomplish it, and that nothing can resist a will that will stake even existence for its fulfillment. Ralph Waldo Emerson said this, a man is what he thinks about all day long. William James said, the greatest discovery of my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitudes of mind. And he also said, we need only in cold blood act as if the thing in question were real and it will become infallibly real by growing into such a connection with our life that it will become real. It will become so knit with habit and emotion that our interests in it will be those which characterize belief. And he also said, if you only care enough for a result, you will almost certainly attain it. If you wish to be rich, you will be rich. If you wish to be learned, you will be learned. 
If you wish to be good, you will be good. Only you must then really wish these things and wish them exclusively and not wish at the same time a hundred other incompatible things just as strongly. In the Bible you read in Mark 9.23, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. My old friend Dr. Norman Vincent Peale put it this way, This is one of the greatest laws in the universe. Fervently do I wish I had discovered it as a very young man. It dawned upon me much later in life, and I found it to be one of the greatest, if not my greatest discovery outside of my relationship to God. The great law, briefly and simply stated, is that if you think in negative terms, you will get negative results. If you think in positive terms, you will achieve positive results. That is the simple fact, he went on to say, which is at the basis of an astonishing law of prosperity and success. In three words, believe and succeed. William Shakespeare put it this way, Our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we often might win by fearing to attempt. George Bernard Shaw said, People are always blaming their circumstances for what they are. I don't believe in circumstances. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, make them. Well, that's pretty apparent, isn't it? And every person who discovered this for a while believed that he was the first one to work it out. We become what we think about. Now, it stands to reason that a person who's thinking about a concrete and worthwhile goal is going to reach it, because that's what he's thinking about. And we become what we think about. Conversely, the man who has no goal, who doesn't know where he's going, and whose thoughts must therefore be thoughts of confusion and anxiety and fear and worry, becomes what he thinks about. His life becomes one of frustration and fear and anxiety and worry. And if he thinks about nothing, he becomes nothing. Now, how does it work? Why do we become what we think about? Well, I'll tell you how it works as far as we know. Now, to do this, I want to tell you about a situation that parallels the human mind. Suppose a farmer has some land, and it's good for the land. Now, the land gives the farmer a choice. He may plant in that land whatever he chooses. The land doesn't care. It's up to the farmer to make the decision. Now, remember, we're comparing the human mind with the land because the mind, like the land, doesn't care what you plant in it. It will return what you plant, but it doesn't care what you plant. Now let's say that the farmer has two seeds in his hand. One is a seed of corn, the other is nightshade, a deadly poison. He digs two little holes in the earth and he plants both seeds, one corn, the other nightshade. He covers up the holes, waters, and takes care of the land. And what will happen? In fact, the land will return what's planted, as it's written in the Bible, as you sow, so shall you reap. Now remember, the land doesn't care. It'll return poison in just as wonderful abundance as it will corn. So up come the two plants, one corn, one poison. Now, the human mind is far more fertile, far more incredible and mysterious than the land, but it works the same way. It doesn't care what we plant. Success, failure. A concrete, worthwhile goal, or confusion. Misunderstanding, fear, anxiety, and so on. But what we plant, it must return to us. You see, the human mind is the last great unexplored continent on Earth. It contains riches beyond our wildest dreams. It will return anything we want to plant. Now, you might say, well, if that's true, why don't people use their minds more? Well, I think they figured out an answer to that one, too. Our mind comes as standard equipment at birth. It's free, and things that are given to us for nothing we place little value on. Things that we pay money for, we value. The paradox is that exactly the reverse is true. Everything that's really worthwhile in life came to us free. Our minds, our souls, our bodies, our hopes, our dreams, our ambitions, our intelligence, our love of family and children and friends and country, all these priceless possessions are free. But the things that cost us money are actually very cheap and can be replaced at any time. A good man can be completely wiped out and make another fortune. He can do that several times. Even if our home burns down, we can rebuild it. But the things we got for nothing, we can never replace. The human mind isn't used because we take it for granted. Familiarity breeds contempt. It can do any kind of job we assign to it, but generally speaking, we use it for little jobs instead of big important ones. Universities have proved that most of us are operating on about 10% or less of our abilities. So decide now, what is it you want? Plant your goal in your mind. It's the most important decision you ever make in your entire life. What is it you want? Do you want to be an outstanding salesman? A better worker at your particular job? Do you want to go places in your company, in your community? Do you want to get rich? All you've got to do is plant that seed in your mind, care for it, work steadily toward your goal, and it will become a reality. It not only will, there's no way that it cannot. You see, that's a law like the 
Every time I hear it, it gets, it gets to me because I know it works, first of all. But even the first time I heard it, everything rang so true. You know what I mean? And like I said, the guys he was talking about, Shakespeare and all that, those are fucking 15th, 16th, 17th century people he's talking about. So this shit ain't new age. It's fucking old age. Um, but what you think about, you bring about. Um, you know, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, put And he uh, hit a good point there. Put all the focus on what you want and don't spread around on multiple things. Um, uh, in the new age and witchcraft and stuff like that, you know, witchcraft is goes by the wheel of the year, right? Uh, we got planting times, we got the harvest times, you know, and then we got where everything dies and then when everything's starting to get ready to be able to plant again. And it's symbolic to your mind. Alchemy is kind of similar in a lot of ways too. But anyways, whenever that first harvest comes around and you can use the moon for this too every month, but you plant a seed in there of your manifestation or what you want to banish out of your life. And then, yeah, there's, so there's actual metal meditations and different things in the new age stuff that I was reading that, you know, you see yourself going in your mind, you plant your seed of what you want. Like if you want it to be cash or whatever, you can just like visualizing this metaphor of you planting this in your mind and going in there planting every day and seeing it grow, seeing it grow, seeing it grow. And then as that happens, as a within, so without kind of uh, some symboli- uh, symbolic stuff. Now, I've never done that, but... I do think it probably would work because um, I've done, I've used a book called, from Basil, Basil E. Lacroix. It's on, it's a black book. It's on, it's on, I can't remember, something un, untold knowledge or anyways. And in that one, it was basically doing a meditation and uh, you, you, your meditation wherever you want to start. And then you see yourself in the meditation walking through this uh, nice area, kids playing. And then all of a sudden you see this mirror and when you walk through the mirror, it's somewhere different where there's an altar. And you go to this altar, and from there, you run it. It's up to you to what you want to see. But in this, you see uh, your manifestation happening to you. And he uses an example with a mailman coming and putting the mail in there. And that's what I did because I wanted that was one of my 10 grand ones. And I ended up hat working. I, I did that meditation for 15 days in a row. And the last 15 days of that month, uh, I stopped, and that's when my daughter's um, money that I talked about, my, uh, the government gave us uh, back pay for her being a disabled child, but she's not a disabled child. Um, she was having trouble with her ears at first, a um, bunch of ear canal things going on, so she wasn't speaking very slowly. She was supposed to have 20 words, and she only had 10, and then when she got to ha- supposed to have 100 words, she only had 50, so that's, to me, you know, I don't, I didn't think that was conclusive, but I also didn't deny the cash either, you know, and yeah, and she's fine. I mean, she's saying above 300 words now, and she's not even three yet, so... You know, she, her ears are growing. Um, they're not growing as fast as others, and that's because of the antibiotics and stuff from that first year. Her first year alive, before she was one, she had four or five ear infections. It was brutal. Anytime any water got in her ear, it wasn't able to come out. So, But uh, I do give merit to that that um, particular thing. I just think it's funny because there's a lot of new age. I think a lot of new age information comes from him, um, judging by the things they tell you and use to use and all that. Um, But I did use his system um, that he's going to get into later, and it was for my EI. Uh, If you follow ceremonial witchcraft, I told you that in Canada, you're only supposed to be on EI for 18 months as a maximum. And then you have to go back to work or apply for something else. Um, And to apply for EI, you can't be fired. Um, If you get, if you are, sorry, if you quit, I don't believe you can get EI. Um, and if you get fired, there has to be on certain grounds. Now, I got fired for some uh, 
the rounds are normal. The rounds I got fired on normally where they wouldn't allow me to have EI, and I got EI, and I've been on EI now for fucking two years in total. Um, uh, it shouldn't be like that, and I'm not going to question it, but it is as it is, um, and then it's, and it's great. But uh, that's what I used it for. I used this technique that he's going to give uh, in a bit there when I get back into the lessons. I use this technique to get my EI. I did follow the steps. Wrote the thing down, put it in my pocket, looked at it every day, and you know it's it, it works. Uh, that's basically what I wanted to hear hit here. It works, and um, yeah, you got to start um, looking at money in a nice way. You got to have a good, but money is not as important as your time. All right, we got to think of money as just an equal, uh, not evil, a not good thing. It's just energy that will help your life you know, propel and get better. And ultimately it'll help you have more time. If you don't have to spend 40 hours a week at a job because you have more money, that's the point, right? But most people are working 40 hours a week at a job to get money to pay for all their bills. And then do what? Nothing. Odd trip here and there, buy a few things that make you feel happy. It's the opposite you want. You want the money to come to you doing something you like. So it's not like work and have enough of it that you can enjoy your family and enjoy doing things. That's how you want this to work. That's how well, and my, that's how I want it to work. I don't know if everybody's like that, but that's, that's my goal. And that's how I am successful because I am doing this. I'm at home. I'm turning this radio thing into my little creative little project where I set it all up. I feel like I'm on the radio and all that. And I, and I love it. I enjoy it. It's awesome. And I get to talk about something I'm very passionate about. This is not so much there because this is less witchy and less magical, but it works. And that's what this channel is trying to do. It's more for your conscious mind because the conscious mind is going to get in the way, but it's conscious mind is focused on this, how to do this, get this stuff going, the money part, and do what he's about to tell you. Well, then it should be no problem to get in the subconscious. And that's why I think this way is powerful. It's simple. It's basic. And the more basic and less uh, complex something is, the more powerful it is. Anyways, let's bring him back on.
them all that I really just wanted to get this out here and wanted you guys to hear it from somebody else so you don't just think it's me and I haven't maybe done any research I wanted to give uh, Dale or Knight or Earl Nightingale his due I didn't want to just come out here and say this stuff to you so 
Um, but yeah, the things he said in it, it, it's all huge. You know how you do that. Um, you know, he's talking about banishing and invoking, right? That's why you're, you're getting rid of the one thing because, you know, that's why I'm probably the law of attraction, just trying to draw something to you. You're not getting rid of something to replace it with, right? So nature's going to fill up that hole. If you do get it in there and you can't maintain it, it's gonna nature's going to fill the hole with what's already there. So he actually is doing the right process that, that I learned. Um, and it, it speaks for itself. I really don't need to claim it. So anyways, it's kind of a weird episode today. This is going to be the only one I'm going to do like this. Um, and I have a better show for you next time, but I'm going to finish it off with some more Dale or yeah, uh, Earl. Anyways, have a good one, everybody. Uh, Ceremonial Witch episode coming on the next few hours. Stay tuned for that. You're going to want to check it out.